Cameron Lifestyle TV shines a spotlight on the legendary Cedric Ian Brooks, who is a writer, composer, arranger, saxophonist, African drummer, lecturer whose African Caribbean jazz rhythms emerge from the Jamaican music and cultural art forms. He was born in Kingston, Jamaica, studied at Alpha Boys School. He has played some of Jamaica's greats and other world greats, such as Bob Marley, Ernest Wrangling, Sonny Bradshaw. In fact, uh, some of the groups that this great legendary person has been involved in, one that I know that many in the population of this audience will familiarize themselves with, is the Mystic Revelation. And we want to welcome this legend to Caribbean Lifestyle. We spy it. As we, what we say now, shine the spotlight on a legend. Welcome, sir. Thank you. You know, um, as a young man growing up, I'm still young, by the way, um, <coughs> still growing up. <laughs> I, I, have, I have known about your music, and one of the experiences that comes back to me several years ago when I was privileged to be part of an organization here in New York, the Jamaica Progressive League, mm -hmm. and you performed there, and it was the first time I was hearing you for years. What have you been doing all this time, Cedric? A uh, number of things. Um, I've been still involved in the music in a number of instances. And um, I've been also involved in the Orthodox Church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And I've been studying in Ethiopia. Um, and recently I've been back because um, of health reasons. But um, I'm involved in the Ethiopian society. Are you still writing music? Oh, yes, definitely. I uh, can't stop. That is the first love and the first aspect of my life. So I'm still involved in music. As a matter of fact, um, the actually going to Ethiopia was because I, I wanted to be involved in the culture. I want to learn a little bit more of the culture of Ethiopia. And um, I was given the privilege through the Ethiopian Orthodox Church to go and study in Ethiopia. So I got a really good glimpse of the Ethiopian society and a lot of the culture um, that I learned so much more about the general African cultures because most all the various other African cultures or the other parts of Africa, um, you can find some um, corresponding culture in Ethiopia and, and so it was very interesting going to Ethiopia and it really broadened my scope even musically. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me um, as you as a saxophonist um, how for the younger in the generation how, how appealing is that instrument to them? Well I usually find that saxophone is is perhaps the most appealing single instrument other than the guitar. Um, uh, it it has a kind of a sound, a kind of masculine tonality that um, really make people really want to respond to it, the music. And of course, you you can get off with all the improvisation and things of that nature. So it is uh, a pretty appealing instrument, and it has been in our Jamaican society for quite some time. You, you're, you're, you play the drums, too? Yes. And your music, I understand, is influenced a lot by the drums. What's the connection? Well, the drum is the, the main African voice. You know, the drum is, the, the drum culture throughout Africa is really the main musical component, the main musical voice. And um, I've been involved in a number of groups that ha use drum as a basis 
for example, the mystic revelation of Rastafari. Of course, the Rastafari drumming is really a very important part of the Rasta culture because it is the, the thing that keep the, the, the chanting and the, the group collection. Mm -hmm. When the groups meet, then the drumming is a part of the calling of the, the Rastafari community. And of course, that is because it really emphasizes the importance of the African culture. Tell me, in your travels, and you have traveled extensively, who would you say are some of the, 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 the most impacting musicians that you've either played with or has had, had an impact on you? It's me, most C Cedric, at the day. Yeah. Because Cedric is the man who used to take time out mm -hmm. to come and teach me as a young star. Yeah. You know, in Jonestown, when I was learning to play my instrument, mm -hmm. and I must always give thanks and be grateful for that. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So we want to big up Cedric in Brooks. Sonra, Sonny Rollins. Um, I've seen him play. Um, Sonra, I've also been. I met the group, and um, at one time I was heading towards getting involved with the group. But um, the philosophy behind the music of Sonra is really to create a new awareness. Where is that group from? Philadelphia. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they try to create a new awareness and new creativity uh, of the based on the African culture mm -hmm. itself. Uh, of course, you know, um, all the music has some bearing with Africa, but the, a group like um, Sonra emphasize more of the traditional African music as the core of their music um, evolution. And then, of course, um, it's in a jazz setting. So jazz has been to the American community the, the freedom of expression, expression yeah. of our people. And, and you know, as we speak of that j type of genre, right, and its popularity, do you think that the, the heritage of the music and the foundation is strong enough to carry it through, especially when you come up against the, com the other more commercialized form of music today? Well, funny enough, it always um, influenced the commercialized music. The, the commercialized music is really a kind of um, watering down or, or um, uh, a way of petering out a little bit. Making it, make it palatable to those who it, don't dig deep. Right, right, right. You know, the spotlight is on you this week, mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that, because of the impact you've made in our society. You open up with a piece, and that was? Sato Masagana. What are you going to close with today? <laughs>